Welcome, everybody, to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, we talk about four different types of freedom, time, financial, location, health freedom. And in that light, I'm always scouring the globe looking for entrepreneurs, influencers, thought leaders in the space and want to share those conversations with you. Hopefully you can get some motivation, inspiration. So today we have um, Naranjan and she's actually a um, spiritual guide, mentor and teacher. So today is going to be all about the emotional aspect. We're going to talking about, you know, living your true self, change, choices um, and the power of, of intention and words. So I'll let Naranjan um, introduce herself, but Naranjan, welcome. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Yeah, and thanks so much for coming onto the platform. And I know we're, you know, we're um, separated across the globe, but the internet's been able <laughs> for us to connect. So tell us more about yourself and how you got started, and we'll go from there. Oh my gosh, that's a really big question. How I got started? I've always been in a place of curiosity about what's on the other side of this third dimensional world that we live in that we can see with our naked eyes. And that curiosity really spun as I grew up as an adult, because it happened as a child. And with life circumstances that happened, be it relationship, work, family, I always went to that realm, call it esoteric, call it mysticism, call it astrology whatever you want to call it is the the realm unseen to get my answers and to get some more insights of how to navigate that challenge and that led me into doing the work that i'm doing and when we fall into a place of this feels really right and i get my own confirmations of this is what i'm here to do uh -huh. i'm all in yeah well that's very powerful uh you're talking about one thing is uh, living life from the inside out. <clears throat> Tell us more about that and how it applies to your journey. Every single thought, word, and action that we have influences how we move forward in life. But those words, thoughts, and actions ultimately come from our past behaviors, not only in this lifetime, but in previous lifetimes too. So all of that encompassing gives us an opportunity to reflect and say, how can I unravel that challenge that we are presented with in every single day life and use it as an opportunity to, to clear the clutter, if you will, on an energetic and an emotional space? Because when we feel, for instance, an element of guilt, for instance, in a relationship, in a, instant, in a situation or a scenario, we unravel that of when did I feel guilt before and how can I now be in a place to understand that because I have more awareness of what that guilt is. Because when you were five years old, we didn't know what guilt was at five years old. We grow up, we expand our consciousness and we have greater insight of how to navigate through that. And that to me is the tipping point of the work that I do, yeah. is observing your emotions, and watching how that reflects and ripples out to the people around you, but how it also changes you and how you navigate through the world. I like this idea of the emotional energetic clutter because um, because if you talk to, like I used to, in my younger years, I used to um, talk to the um, a, a, re a retirement home and used to talk to the elderly. And so I learned, you know, the things that they wish they had done and i realized that you know regret it was a really big aspect you know and i and i didn't want <clears throat> to and then uh but then i hang out with my nephew and nieces they're like four or five years old and they're just so light and you know and then it's like it's like we accumulate all this garbage and emotional baggage through our lives so it's yes. quite interesting when you talk about this clutter and so how do people clean out this clutter you know there's so much talk about letting go and uh does it really work and you know healing from emotional trauma tell us more about that the healing from emotional trauma absolutely it works like i shared with you earlier every single emotion comes from a place 
it's not just planted there just for us to see, hey, let's see what she's going to do with that <laughs> this time. It's more on the lines of, it comes from somewhere to bring awareness for your own soul's evolution without this getting too esoteric, but I think it's, it's going to go there anyways. I'm a true believer that we're only here for two reasons. As human beings incarnated on this planet, we're here for two reasons. And one is the evolution of your own soul. Because outside of this physical meat suit that we wear, there's a consciousness that resides within us. And within that consciousness, we're here to expand it and learn from it. And what we know is the only way we really learn is through sometimes really painful lessons. When it's handed to us with ease, we don't, we don't give it the credit that, it's, that it gives us. So it's the evolution of our own soul, but it's also the expansion and the healing from that awareness to this planet that we live in, live on, mm -hmm. Mother Earth, Gaia, but also expanding the two on a galactic level, on a cosmic and galactic level, because energy never dies, it just ripples out further mm -hmm. and further. So those are the two reasons I'm a firm believer and I've seen and I've witnessed myself and my clients and my mentors that that is the, the real purpose. So while we can enjoy all the beauty of life that we have to offer here, when we, we're actually in school, we're in energy school, we're in soul evolution school when we, when we live on this planet. So Interesting. Yeah, I liked it. One of, um, I was talking to a spiritual a medium and they were saying that um you just uh we are just we're just souls and we're energies you know going through just manifesting and uh you know it's it's quite, i find the spiritual realm the energy realm quite fascinating because you know then we're talking about like karma and then dharma and you know all of these uh esoteric concepts but if you actually think about it and apply it you can produce massive uh shifts and results yeah let's so let's talk about some of the work you do um you're talking about um you know what makes you different from other spiritual teachers initiatives you know mediums guides etc i'm a believer that everybody brings their own type of energy to the table so with you being a physician you bring your own energy your own thoughts and your own opinions and judgments and knowledge and wisdom to what you do outside of this podcast even on the podcast and i'm a believer of that so everybody in the realm or my peers are in their realm they're doing what they're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. and i'm not mocking them because there's going to be a need for everybody and there still is i think but for me it's more about the energy that i bring the conversation we have the feeling that you have in being in dialogue and being in relationship with me, be it from a workshop, from a presentation, or from hearing this podcast. There's perhaps an unconscious awareness within you that gets triggered. And it's for the individual, be it you or other people listening, to be able to determine, is that the right person for me to work with? What does that feeling create? What does it inspire or nudge? So it's it invites more reflective questions for each individual. But in, to answer your question, long-winded way, I believe I bring a more non-judgmental space, opportunity for individuals to work with me while being in a space of conditional love. Because I can recognize on a soul level, you're here, it's just training days. We're all here in school. So there's no judgment and being in that softer place to land. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard of this term, but an energy, there are two real forms of energy that each of us carry. Regardless of the gender you want to identify you with, we have a masculine energy, which is a very action-driven focus, and we have a feminine energy, which is very nurturing and soft and compassionate. All those qualities I believe I'm a really good balance between the two, mm. but when I'm in the work of what I do for clients and how I support them in their evolution, the emphasis on the, the feminine, the divine feminine energy 
is amplified. So holding that nurturing place, holding that compassionate, non-judgment place is, I believe, a, a true asset and a bigger element to what I bring to the table in contrast to other people who are doing similar work. Mm, interesting. And uh, so one thing is, uh, you know, so I, I, I have a lot of colleagues and friends that are um, empaths, they're, they're intuitive, they're not quite mediums or, you know, that type of um, skill, but what, uh, and it looks like you, you know, looks like you did um, spend a lot of time learning your gifts and uh, realigning it. Uh, what, and then tell us more about that. I'm very curious how you develop those gifts and what resources you use. A lot of the resources I used were going inwards, were being in community, actually, a lot of it was. Yes, we can gain the information through books and podcasts and courses and all that kind of stuff because there's a there's so much of it out there <laughs> but the true integration of the knowledge to integrating it into who i am and embodying it on a deeper level is from my perspective done from a community individuals who can guide you one-on-one -on, -one on that process if you're courageous to do one-on-one, -on -one, absolutely, I did. And there were some components where I did it in a group. So we would have a very small, tight-knit group where we could lean on each other and learn and put into practice some of the principles I'd learned in books over the years. But also that came more to light because as you know, when you, when you truly understand something, it takes on a whole different meaning when you're able to share that with somebody else. So when we read a book, for instance, we absorb the information, but the true integration of the content is when we can share it with others. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had done. I had learned a lot. I practiced a lot on the way and I'd healed a lot of my wounds. Are they still going to be wounds? Absolutely. Otherwise I won't be here. So, but it, it forged me the opportunity to integrate on a much deeper level because now I'm a conduit, if you will, a conduit of energy to be able to transform energy because we know energy is everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I don't know if it did. And then you, in your coaching, you you know, with clients, uh, you talk about you dive deep into the core karmic issues that manifest as, you know, ego, self-esteem, self-worth. Um, tell us more about that. That's, I find that fascinating. Mm -hmm. the, the clients that I work with often, and perhaps a lot of the world that we live in, is driven in a place of living from the mind. So almost living from the neck up, right? Because everything's we've got to think about this we've got to think about that and not really do a whole bunch of feeling but doing a lot more thinking so it's creating a balance between the mind and the heart and that's where my work comes in is nudging individuals to create that balance of what can be dropped from the mind and how can i open my heart on a deeper level to create that balance of how i want to move through the world and not be totally disconnected and cut off in so many ways to, to nurture and to love and to truly be present in, in relationships or even with yourself. So I think it's really crucial to have that. And tipping onto your point earlier about the empaths, there are many individuals who want to identify themselves as empaths, but yet having any gift I call it a gift. Some, some people may call it a challenge. When you go through a process of learning and you're presented with something that is truly a gift from my perspective. So the bigger challenge is what do you do with the gift? If you're identifying yourself as an empath, that label, if you will, has come to you for a reason. And it's your responsibility to do something with it. So for instance, with yourself, as a medical doctor, you're coming in in that space of you have awareness and you have the gift of what you know. So you're doing something with it. You're supporting others on their healing journey. 
emotionally, physically. So that would be my quest to these individuals who identify themselves as an empath that what's next? Because it's presented to you for a reason. Yeah, interesting. Uh, you know, we're coming close to the end of this interview, but um, uh, one thing is uh, what have you seen clients uh, gain from working with you and how has this um, changed you as a as a leader i've seen clients become more confident more expressive with their gifts because when you can validate that they do see an energy that there is another energy there even though it's not positioned as a human being and it's there to show you something and that the empathic gifts that you have you can amplify them to not only influence your own life for the better but influence other people's lives for the better. So the confidence, the clarity, the support, and the knowing of what to do with these gifts that they have, what to do with them, and how to, how to have better relations. So every single emotion that shows up, shows up for a reason, and how to navigate that. So that's what I believe that they've gained from them. Yeah. In the... I really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, how can people follow you on social media, visit your website and contact you? Absolutely. They can reach me at my website, which is brightshininglight.com. I also have a podcast, which is called Master of Your Crafts. I'm available on Instagram, uh, Naranjan Nota and at Bright Shining Light and LinkedIn and Facebook. Yeah, either of the handles, bright shining light on the right. Yeah, and uh, for all the listeners out there, um, thanks so much for tuning in. All of uh, Naranjan's resources will be in the links and show notes. Thanks so much for sharing wonderful insights on very esoteric, um, very abstract concepts, but you know, very important. Yeah, you know, we're all spiritual beings on a journey, and uh, we look forward to hearing about your future success. Thank you so much, Christopher, for having me on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you.